All right, back on another video. Today, I will be reviewing Chapter 3, Season 3. Let's get into it. Starting with the Battle Pass for this season, I thought it was actually really solid. There was only really four skins I really liked in the Battle Pass. The Rass, I could deal without. Eevee, Malik, Darth Vader, and Indiana Jones were spectacular. These skins are some of the best skins we've had in the entire game for a little bit now. So I'm really happy finally getting Vader and a little surprise with Indiana Jones. I was not expecting that. I should have expected that because the movie was supposed to come out around this time. So yeah, that makes sense. And really good original skins. Eevee and Malik are both spectacular. Absolutely love both of their edit styles. Eevee's little dress is spectacular. Malik's fully different color combo. You could mix and match the color of his normal outfit with the capes. It was great. That skin's spectacular. I personally think this is probably the best battle pass we've had in the last three seasons. I could change my mind about that, but at the moment, I think it is. The only thing that would up that is Chapter 3 Season 1 only because of Spider-Man. But after that, I think this battle pass is better. The new map changes this season were Reality Falls and Shuffled Shrines. Throughout the season, Epic changed pre-existing POIs with a feature that every single new game you would play, that location would change. The first one they did this with was Logjam Lotus, previously Logjam Lumberyard. Every match that you would play, it could change to five different POIs. Throughout the season, Epic would change different locations to do the same exact thing. I'm not going to go through every single one because there's a bunch of them. But by the end of the season, they all had their preset location. I thought it was a really cool idea. I hope they do something more like this in the future to make the map more interesting. At the launch of the season, we had a new mechanic called Storm Sickness. This only is an effect if you last in a storm for a long period of time. It takes around 7 to 8 minutes for it to actually take effect. When it does, it drains your health really quickly. It's not that crazy. It doesn't change too much. It's kind of annoying, but it's only really there to stop heal offs during endgame. The new items they added at the start of the season were the two-shot shotgun, the DMR, the Hammer Assault Rifle, and the Reality Seed. The two-shot shotgun shoots two shells at once and is absolute dog shit. I hate this weapon. I've hated it the whole season, and it still sucks. The DMR is just a shitty version of, like, the Scope they are, or even the Semi Sniper from, like, Chapter 1. I'm not a huge fan of it. The Hammer acts more like an SMG than an actual AR. It has no fucking range to the thing. You could be shooting from fucking 60 meters and not hit one shot. But 30 meters and lower, it's not too bad. But at the end of the day, it's just another SMG. The reality scene was actually really cool in the beginning of the season. I don't know if it's because people didn't know how to use it yet or because Epic didn't nerf it yet. But you could go around and take everyone else's reality seed and pick them. Basically, it had like a stage thing where from the first stage when you throw it, down it would grow green weapons and then when you pick the weeds from it you would get you know high rarity so you would go green blue purple legendary and then even mythic at the end and you would only get certain mythics per area where you threw it down they were cool though but towards the end of the season i think they weren't as great the first update of the season we got the fucking grapple glove a reskin version of the spider-man mythics it is not as good as the spider-man mythics because epic nerfed them they only have 30 shots in them when spider-man's had 80 shots in them that's the big nerf also it does feel a little slower i'm pretty sure it is slower and you can't shoot mid-air like if you like stop swinging and are about to try to shoot someone with a shotgun or something you can't shoot the weapon unlike the spider-man mythic where you could shoot the weapon mid-air so they did nerf it to oblivion so that's why it's not as good as the spider-man mythic and everyone wants the spider-man mythics to come back but realistically all it's gonna do is they're gonna bring them back and it's gonna be the exact same thing as the grapple club only if they increase it back to the original version of the spider-man mythic to 80 and make the speed better and be able to shoot mid-air when you're falling down but if they ever do bring the spider-man mythics back i don't think they're gonna do that i think they're just gonna copy and paste the grapple glove the next update we got darth vader on the map we got him in the battle pass, but now he was an AI on the map. He would land in his little shuttle thing randomly on the map. There's like six different spots or whatever, five different spots he could land on the map with two extra stormtroopers. So they unvaulted the E-11 blaster again. So they gave them that. And then if you killed Darth Vader, you would get a brand new lightsaber. This is not a copy and paste of some other one. I guess it is a copy and paste. They just took the same lightsaber mechanic and moved it over a different one. Except you could throw this one. That was the only big difference with this one. You could throw this one. But yeah, if you killed him, you would get the lightsaber. He was a bitch to kill. And the lightsaber sucked. Just like the original ones, they fucking all blow. 
The lightsabers aren't good. They're not worth picking up, but whatever. It was cool to see Darth Vader on the map as an AI and fun to fight him once in a while. But yeah, it wasn't that great. This update, we also got the Ripsaw Launcher. This weapon is not good. You can use it like as a pickaxe kind of too. If you go up to something and rev it up, you can like hit the tree and get mats from it, which is a little weird, but it's interesting. But as a weapon, it's not good. You have to like line it up and then send it off. And then if it does hit someone, it only hits 60. So it is not good. It's not worth picking up. It was just kind of like a quote unquote meme weapon, but it wasn't even a good meme weapon. So yeah, it was not worth it. The next update, we did get a reskin of the flare gun. It was called the firework flare gun. The only difference with this is I feel like it was nerfed. It didn't feel as good as the original flare gun. The flare gun had like a wider range and it felt like it got a lot of more people. But I would see like someone like basically like in front of me or like very near me or get shot at after like a little bit of using it. And it does not reach as much as it used to. But the only real like effect to it was, you know, has the firework effect. So yeah, it wasn't as good as the original i think they nerfed it i'm not 100 percent sure on that but yeah it was definitely not as good the update after that i think is one of the worst updates we have ever had they added the charge smg the best gun in the game holy fuck this gun is absolutely trash funny thing about this is they vaulted the best smg in the game the combat smg i know a lot of people hated this weapon but it is easily the best smg in the game but they had to replace it with the worst smg in the game uh the only good thing about that is now we're like oh now we know what smg to pick up not the charge but the thing with the charge is every time you would open a chest you would always get like a gold or a purple one epic really wanted you to have this fucking weapon this dog shit pile of shit of a weapon they did the same thing with the fucking charge shot did they not learn their lessons? We do not like charged weapons. They're so bad. They're not worth it at all. In an SMG version of that, where you have to wait to shoot the fucking thing, and even if you just tap it once, you're only going to shoot two fucking bullets, and they're like 15 damage a shot. It's so fucking bad. They did unvault the port fort which was a really good addition to no build. Like, the port fort and no build was spectacular. They did have to nerf it. You could pick up to like three or four of them. I don't know how many you could pick up, but um, they nerfed it down to two. I don't remember how many you used to be able to pick up, but when they first brought it back, you could pick up a good amount, but now they you can only pick up two. So, um, But yeah, they're really good in no build. The next update was the summer update. And let me say it up front, this summer update sucked. It was not good. The challenges were boring, bad, not interesting. They barely changed the map. The skins were fine. I didn't buy any of them, so. Yeah, but I don't buy that much in this game anymore. But you know what I mean. I don't think, I, a lot of people agree that this was not a worthwhile summer update. They didn't add too much. The only real things they added was the ice creams, which the ice creams were just kind of like reskins of the candy from uh, Halloween. So, yeah, they weren't that great. Um, in this update, they did add a new weapon, the Prime Shotgun. Actually, I think this weapon was pretty solid. Um, you could kind of go back and forth. This is what I did during the season. Striker versus Prime. Whatever higher rarity there was, I would always pick whatever's better. Like, oh, Gold Prime compared to the green or gr uh, gray Striker. You know, like, even Purple Striker. I would always pick up the Gold version. But if it's between both of them, Gold Rarity, I think the Striker is just a bit better personally because the reload speed just because of that the body damage they did nerf with the striker so it wasn't as good that's why they brought in the prime or i think that's why they nerfed the striker in the first place because the prime was coming out but i think the striker is a little bit better still just because of that reload speed not being able to reload quick enough with the prime kind of sucks in like very stressful situations mainly in no build the big deal with the prime was the first shot you shot with it did more damage whatever like the final shell you had it or the first shell whatever the hell if you had four shells in it it would do more damage if you had three it would do a little bit less damage that fourth shell two a little bit less damage of the third one a little bit less than that so you will always wanted to keep it reloaded and the reload speeds really slow with it so that's why i think the striker is a little bit better but the prime's still good. I still think a better rarity of a prime is better than a lower rarity of the striker. But comparing both with the exact same rarity, striker I think is just a smidge better there. 
After the summer update, Epic came back swinging with the fucking Dragon Ball Z collab, or the Dragon Ball Super collab. I'm pretty sure that's what it was actually called. In this update, they added the Kamehameha, which was a kind of beam blast you could use. It was like three-use beam blast. It would kind of fling you up in the air just a little bit, like off the ground a little bit, and you would shoot like this big beam of projectile. But yeah, it wasn't too overpowered it was overpowered enough where like if you hit someone they're fucking dead like if you keep them in that stream they're fucking dead but not broken enough to where you could you could outplay them easily outplay them by moving around or like getting under them you could get under them and like shoot them or like snipe in midair while they're about to do it so it wasn't too overpowered they also added the nimbus cloud glider mythic which it was like the broom. You would tap it and use it, and you would get flung up in the air, and it was like glider redeploy. It was actually pretty good for glider redeploy, and you could always cancel it, which that's really nice without fall damage. There was that the versus board. It was just kind of like a replacement for a little bit of the bounty board. Click on it, you know, and it would randomly find a player that also clicked on it around the same time you did or a little bit after, and you would just fight each other. Whoever killed each other um, would get the gold. So it was basically the bounty board, but it was just a little different to mix it up a little bit for the Dragon Ball Z collab or the Dragon Ball Super collab. So it was a little interesting, but not that crazy. This update, they also brought back Lazy Lagoon. I didn't mention it in the locations because it was kind of weird how they brought it back. They replaced Daily Bugle with it, and then they brought back the fucking cannons too. Very weird, very weird how they did this, but they replaced Daily Bugle with it, and it became Lazy Lagoon. Yeah, very interesting how they did that. I get why they did that, but it doesn't make sense to me. Whatever. We finally got rid of Daily Bugle, but like the sign's still there too. If you go to fucking Lazy Lagoon right now on the map, it would still be there. I don't know. It's weird that they brought Lazy Lagoon back. The, the thing that would make sense was bringing back the fucking volcano, but no, they brought back Lazy Lagoon, which I'm fine with Lazy Lagoon. Lazy Lagoon's good, but I don't know. It's weird. Whatever. Lazy Lagoon took the spot of Daily Bugle. But that's it for Chapter 3, Season 3. Did I think this was a solid season? I actually do think this was a solid season. I've seen online that a lot of people did not like this season that much because of the loot pool. I think people are wrong. I think this loot pool was really fun. The Striker's spectacular. I absolutely love the Striker. I'm not a big burst guy in games, but damn, is the Striker good. Is the striker good? Um, I know it was in uh, the last couple seasons, so uh, yeah, it was introduced then, but I realized how good it is. You know, like I played with it a little bit here and there because, you know, it was in the game, but the MK was still in the game, so I thought, oh, that one was better. But no, the striker was 10 times better because the damage. The damage is crazy with the striker. Um, and then having the striker pump, it's kind of weird. The striker AR and the striker pump, but having those two and then the stinger slash combat SMG. That's all I needed. And then they brought back the heavy sniper. That's, hey, I'm fine. Personally, I think the striker AR, this is the most controversial take I will ever say in my Fortnite history. I'm going to get canceled for this. I think the striker AR is better than the scar. Fight me. I do. The striker is so much more accurate and precise with its shots than the scar will ever be. So, hey, if the scar comes back, I'll be fine with it, but if the striker isn't in the game, then I'm going to pick up the scar. But hey, if the striker's still in the game, I'm picking up the striker. Even for like a gold uh, fucking scar. I may use that as my SMG at that point, but still, I still think the striker is the best AR in the entire game. In Fortnite history. Eh, okay. Maybe there's a little controversial thing. Uh, it could be maybe either the scope they are. Scope they are is really nice. Um, or the infantry. Those are like my three right there. Scope they are, infantry, striker. Top three ARs, don't care. I, I, I didn't rank them yet, but you know what I mean. That's top three. Um, but yeah, I think the loot pool was fine. Um, you know, mainly zero build. I didn't play that much building. If I played building, it was bot lobbies. Zero build, I would play the, you know, normal game. But zero build was really good this season. I thought it was really fun. Um, you know, you had the port of forts down. You could throw those down. Those are really good in zero build. The shield bubbles. And I think those are overrated. I really do. Um, because all you need to do is run through it and you can kill the guy. And you can't even shoot out of it. It's only really good for rezzing. But the, the guy can still run into this fucking shield bubble and just shoot you if you're rezzing. If you throw that down. So I'm not a big fan of the shield bubble. But overall, I think this was a solid season. I would give this a rating of a 6.5. Yeah, I think that's my final rating. I could change that later on the line. I've said that multiple times. Um, and I think I would change one season at the moment, but we're not going to get into that. Uh, but 6.5, that is my rating at the current moment as of the season ending. 
Um, that could always change. Maybe I really like this season later. And I'm like, oh my god, that was such a good season. Or maybe I'll hate this season. Like that season actually sucked. But overall, I think the loot pool was fine. I thoroughly enjoyed it. The map changes changed enough to where it felt unique. Um, I'm not a big fan of how they did like the rotating map changes. I think they were a cool idea, but I feel like they should have added more stuff like that instead of just like picking between POIs and only changing like five of the same map changes rotations. Not a big fan of that, but it was a cool idea. Uh, I hope they implement it something like that later down the line with something else. Maybe they will. I have no idea, but we'll see. But yeah, the battle pass was good. I thought it was pretty solid, mainly the four skins I mentioned earlier. Um, the rest don't really care about that four main crew right there. Spectacular. But overall, this is a good season. Not the best, but not the worst. Definitely above average. That's why I give it a 6.5. So. But yeah, that's really it for my review of Chapter 3, Season 3. Pretty solid season. Not one of the best, but not one of the worst either. Pretty middle of the road, I would say. A little bit above middle of the road, but middle of the road. But uh, yeah, that's really about it. See ya.